episode number 109. First episode of 2020. Yes, I know I'm releasing this Wednesday afternoon. Usually I do Mondays. You're going to have to deal with it. I was living my life over the holidays with my friends and family. And now we're back on track. So we have a Wednesday release. And then what would that be? Five days from now, we're going to have a Monday release. So before we get into the guest on the business side of the house, episode 109 is brought to you by longtime podcast sponsor on it. And if you listen to the podcast, you know what on it is and what they're about. And if you don't, Briefly, they're a company that is driven by human optimization. It is a one-stop shop for you. And that one-stop shop is on it, O-N-N-I-T dot com slash hot. And you'll know you're in the right place because you're going to see the podcast graphic front and center. And it should say under that, receive up to 10% off when you check out. And on that main landing page, the first thing you're going to see is AlphaBrain, which is their flagship product. It is a nootropic. It is something that I have personally used. And I try to talk about this from my personal anecdotal perspective. I do not use this every single day because I do notice a difference specifically when it comes to uh, memory and the ability to recall words. So often when I'm getting ready to go do a speech, I will have some alpha brain in the morning and it just, it helps me feel like I can pull the words out of the ethernet of my brain when I need them when I'm on stage. So enhanced cognitive function. Below that is the uh, power food active. It's a protein for your muscles and it combined with micronutrients to support your body. Power food uh, at its finest. And then fitness underneath that is going to be your portal to shop for items you can use in your pursuit of optimizing your health and performance. On the very bottom, currently right now, it has a total gut health, which is something that I do use and... I don't know what the deal is sometimes with my digestion. My stomach just grumbles all the time. And I actually don't know if that's normal. I perhaps need to go on a web MD spiral. But I find when I take the total gut health and I actually focus on, you know, some probiotics or microbiomes, it does seem to get better. So maybe I need to work on that a little bit in 2020. And I enjoy their total gut health product. But that's just a little bit at the very top of the page. There's supplements, nutrition, fitness, apparel, anything you could want. There's written word, videos, audio, apparel, equipment that you can use, and then, of course, the nutrition. So dig in there. They make awesome products. I love the company. And check it out, onit.com slash hot. Now, my guest for today is the youngest guest that I've ever had. She is the daughter of Travis and Kisa Davison, the owners of SBG where I live and train here in Kalispell, and also Whitefish. And then there's actually four in, well, it's not the Flathead Valley, but there is Whitefish, Big Fork, Kalispell. That makes kind of an L in the Flathead Valley. And then there's down in Missoula. So there's four SBGs here in the area of Montana that I live in. And they have four kids. I have three in my family. All kids are different. I'm sure any parent that hears that would agree. And they all express themselves differently and they all grow in different directions. So I have two older boys and a little girl. And I am terrified, and I talk about this a little bit in the podcast, about the things that she has access to on social media when it comes to influence and inspiration. The Snapchat, the TikTok, the Instagram, it... I struggle with people portraying a lifestyle that is not accurate, and I have a filter that at least has 42 years behind it. So when it comes to my daughter, I am always thinking of people or things that set a great example, and I can't think of a better example than Stella. And another thing we talk about is I'm trying to find more women guests for the podcast because right now she is my fourth guest who is female. And I think there need to be more because half the world is women and women are inspirational as hell. But back to Stella and why I think she's such an amazing role model for my daughter. She is 18 years old and she's graduated high school in about, you know, two weeks because why not graduate early? And she's currently an Olympic hopeful in judo targeting 2024 or 2028. And we talk about that, so I don't need to go into it any deeper. But she's been doing also Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu since probably she could move. I suspect Travis and Kisa were, you know, folding her into, uh, you know, arm bars and turtle when she was laying in the crib with her 
twin brother. She is a purple belt, but I think that's because of her age. I I suspect, and I know almost nothing about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that her skill level is far above that of a purple belt, but she's limited by her age. But she also teaches Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to kids, which of course makes her a saint because I would just want to punt them across the mats. But the, when it gets to being an inspiration and a role model, the reason I say that is she's created and crafted a life for herself around her goals. She's driven, she's disciplined, she's goal-oriented, she's organized, and that is an example for my daughter. Not about judo, which is her target, obviously, but just about life in general. And I'll let her explain the rest. And she is joined with return guest Travis and Kisa Davison, because I thought it would be interesting to have both sides of that coin, the individual perspective and then the parent's perspective of raising that child and helping, hopefully, shepherd them towards their goals. And that is what, what, wow, double what? That is what episode number 109 is about with Stella Davison and her parents, Travis and Kisa. Enjoy. Okay, I got the red smoke. Turn one, north and south, west of the smoke, west of the smoke. Okay, copy, west of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close now. Oh, what a minute, give it to me, I need it. Get cleared hot. Copy, cleared hot. Please don't look at me. <laughs> this is perfect. The fact that the lights are dim. Okay, look, tell me when you, you press that record good. button. Oh. <laughs> it's not on yet. It's red. Mm. It, it yeah. goes green when it goes It's on. armed. It's just armed. It's not going. So. First cuss word out of the bucket. That's fine. That's sign language. It doesn't yeah, that, count. It's, we're in an audio only format right now, so that doesn't that's count. That's the only way I'm going to cuss tonight. What's your, what's your guys hang up with that? I mean, you These guys, guys make me feel bad about my <laughs> language all the time. That's I have true. heard both of them say absolutely everything that you say many times. Are we just going to sit here and pretend you that you, you two don't cuss? You yeah. Can't prove Are that. we, we just going to sit here and pretend I'm not that. even going to try to prove it. But I'm just saying that I, I have been around and heard you too. I don't know what words two. he's talking about. That's fine. <laughs> I look at you. You're Excuse me while silence. I turn off my, whatchamacallit. Your watch. I don't know how to do it. It's your watch. You should be fine. There it is. Oh, do you do it on here? I thought you did it on you your can't. phone. It's the same as your phone. You can just hit the... Oh, yeah. It's the bell. Half moon. The no bell. You got it. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Are you ready, ladies? Don't Isn't this all me? about Stella? Don't Why can't she me? look at you? Because it makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be spectacular. Uh. So... <clears throat> We can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about, but I was thinking about this uh, in the last day or two. I um, have only had two female guests on the podcast, which is a disservice. Probably a good call. That's actually. not true. I I've been on your podcast before as well. You've okay, had, three. You've had four female guests on your podcast. I'm counting. This is why you no. shouldn't have you female had, guests on your podcast. Do I need to count them all? Prefer if you didn't. Go ahead. Because okay. it hasn't been four. Hold Actually, on. I, I want take you back. Two. You've had three. Correct. She will be the fourth. Yes, but I've also done 108 episodes. Okay. And so your point is my, my a point valid is, point. Just my be point accurate is, in your data. Okay. Hold on. Let me, which microphone are you? We'll just do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he actually clicked it. I can't. Yeah. No, we'll turn it back on. Point being, it is obviously 50% of the population is women. I have a daughter, and the thing I can have different conversations with my sons than I can with my daughter. And I have made the mistake more than once with my daughter of uh, trying to motivate her the same way that I can motivate my sons. And it's just very different. So I look at my daughter and what I want her to be able to do as far as success or planning or motivation. And you, Stella, are an awesome example of that for where you are in your life and where you want to go and how regimented you are. And so it's not just awesome for my daughter. I think it's just awesome for women in general. I'm trying to find more. I think it's important to find more women guests to talk about the awesome stuff that they're doing as well. You bring up a very interesting and valid point. <laughs> so that's what I want to talk about. How we get there is up to you guys because you're obviously joined with your mom and dad, which is a good call because I don't know you as well <laughs> as I know your mom and dad. And so they can help <laughs> Keep things on the rails. Keep us moving in the right direction. How about the, how about we start with this? How about we start 
Question for Travis and Kisa. How, what do you guys think of when you see your daughter? Be nice. It depends on the time of day, what day it is. In general, <clears throat> where she's at in her life and where she's going. I'm going to need a glass of wine if we're going to have this deep of a conversation. It's you directly have, in front of you. You actually have one. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> People don't see that. <laughs> they do now. Yeah, it's directly in front of you. So I, when I look at my daughter, it's the same feeling that I had since the day she was born, which is, oh my God, there are so many possibilities that I can see for her. Is she going to see those possibilities? Does she see those possibilities? And what can I do to make sure she doesn't f mess it up. Yeah, no pressure though. <laughs> Travis? Uh, boy. I, I, I think uh, I feel a huge amount of pride, you know, when I, when I see her because uh, I realize <clears throat> how awesome she is. And, um, you know, whether it's valid or not, I, you know, I take some credit for that. Um, and so I, uh, mostly I feel just, a, a lot of pride. I, I take a lot of pride in the fact that she is so driven and so disciplined and responsible and hardworking and, um, you know, she's doing a lot of times the things that I thought that I would do when I was younger, maybe not in judo or, or, or martial arts, but like skateboarding or whatever, where, you know, I thought I would, you know, become the best in, in that field. And I never did. Um, and then I look at her and I'm like, holy shit, like she's, uh, she's actually going to do it. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's, pretty surreal um pretty awesome and at the same time um and i'm sure this will come up later when we're talking but i really haven't done that much um to be responsible for that you know i don't i don't wake her up in the morning and say hey stella it's time to train or hey uh you should do this camp or hey why don't you sign up for this <laughs> tournament um there hasn't been any of that. Um, I've, I've not... Uh, Ever? Never. Never. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I think if you said those things, I probably wouldn't want to do them. <laughs> I've never... That's fair, I, though. I, yeah. I, because there's different ways to motivate people and, yeah. and that approach. No, and the motivation has people. to come from me. So Definitely. where did you find it? When did you... So... I'm trying to think of the best way. Would it be better for you Hold to introduce on. your Hold daughter? On. or for I was going to say backup. Does anybody even know who she is? Well, that's what I was going to go to next. I was talking to you guys at Cheese. Usually just Kisa? assume that you're no one. Then you have that's to prove yourself. It's a good rule. Hi, I'm Stella. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Would it be better for Stella to introduce herself or you so. guys to introduce her? I think you should introduce yourself. Stella, it's all yours. Well, I already said my name, so... Stella Never Davison. Started. Yeah. Uh, you can work yourself backwards from what your goals are or start at the beginning. Your choice. That's pretty broad. I've only Is been it? alive 18 years, but it doesn't seem like... Uh, what are you training for right now? Um, judo. Specifically what? Well, one day, the Olympics. Um, I'm not nearly as far um, as I need to go right now. I've just barely scratched the surface as a competitor. Um, <laughs> How long have you been competing for, though? I've been doing judo for five years now. Um, I started in the fall of 2014, so I guess a little bit over five. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, but, but back up. <laughs> well, well, that's not really fair to only say five years because what a lot of the judo players don't know is that I've done jujitsu since I was five. Oh, well, I was gonna, now they all know Stella. Well, what I was going to ask you is how <laughs> long have most of the people you are competing with and against been doing judo? Um, that kind of... It can probably vary based yeah, off their background as well. It definitely varies based on um, if we're looking at a national level versus the world. Because in the world, 
a lot of the high level athletes, like especially coming from different countries where they're like forced to start these sports at a young age, they've been doing judo competitively since they were like five or four. I've been doing jujitsu that long, but it's a lot different. It's not nearly as um, rigorous or intense. Like jujitsu is pretty laid back. If How I'm dare being you? Honest. <laughs> She's not wrong. No, no, judo is violent. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't participate in it. <laughs> I see the practices. I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to do any of that. Yeah. All this talk of hitting somebody with the earth. It's like, how about I just sit down? <laughs> yeah, it, and it's, it's not even just the throws or the big takedowns, but like the grip fighting and just being like shaken around. and like. Which you probably got a lot of exposure to the grip fighting though, and I would say the competition and probably the performance anxiety that comes from that in your jujitsu career leading up to that. Yeah. Which has got to be a huge advantage. Yeah, the other big advantage of growing up doing jujitsu is that um, a lot of the girls I fight um, don't have a lot of ground game, and that's a big part of the sport that's left out in the U.S. in particular. Other countries are a little bit better with, like, pins and turnovers and being able to do submissions, but in the U.S., like, they're lacking a lot. We should probably describe judo a little bit because yeah. I think most people would have an understanding of jujitsu just from the podcast that we have done. Um, want to take a stab at just describing judo? If we're comparing it to jujitsu, then it's just the takedowns. However, um, the takedowns that you're doing, you can't grab the legs with your with your hands. You can trip and you can do like hip tosses. Um, and then once it gets to the ground, somehow there's a there's a limited time. There's a sense of urgency to either pin your opponent or um, submit them with like a choke or an arm lock. You technically can't do shoulder locks, but if you're doing it as like a turnover to pin them, there's like a little bit of a, bl- the lines are a little bit blurred. Can you do lower body stuff in judo? No. No. So waist down is completely off limits. No ankles, mm. knees, hip locks. You can grab them, but you can't, like, threaten to submit them. Interesting. Okay. But you can't grab their legs when they're standing. Correct. And right, then it's, it would be more like uh, Greco-Roman wrestling with the kimono. And it was also, at least in Japan, the origin of jiu-jitsu, correct? Yeah, I mean, the two were um, or they started indistinguishable okay. in the beginning. To begin. All right. Right. So the nawaza, the, the groundwork that Stella's talking about, um, the difference was is uh, the the rule set as it changed uh, kind of led judo in the direction of putting more of an emphasis on big throws and in jujitsu it put more of an emphasis on the submission. Okay. So I think this is an interesting question. Not that it's my podcast, but I would like to ask her this question. That's exactly why you guys are here. What is it? I mean, you grew up doing jujitsu. Well, first of all, even before jujitsu. I was going to say, we're like halfway into the origin story. We're not even. You grew yeah. up basically wrestling your brothers. Yeah. Three brothers. And we are a competitive family. Let's be yes. honest. Oh, that's Just not true. Bit. I mean, if we were c- to compare ourselves to other families, I just like made we're a the most and they're trying to fight me. On it. Don't you think that's <laughs> grounds for being? I'm going to stay out of this one. Good call. <laughs> so, but then when you started doing jujitsu, you loved jujitsu for so I long. I still do. And yeah. Did course, you love it initially? Um, Even before she did it, she yeah. loved it. I was really upset when they let Ricky, my twin brother, start jujitsu before me. So. Because I'd imagine. As gym owners, you see kids who love it, kind of in the middle, like bleh, and then kids like, I don't want to do this, but their parents are just like, oh yeah, go that's do, my younger go brother. to class. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, no, it's like that with everything, right? I mean, but th- it, honestly, there's very few people who actually push their kids into it. Yeah, unfortunately, there's too many parents who take the approach of, oh well, my kid doesn't like this, therefore, we should try something else. Yeah. Um, I'm all for, you know, your, your, your children should definitely pursue what they're passionate about, but we've talked about on another podcast. Um, there are just certain things as parents where we know that something's good for our kids, 
regardless of whether they want to eat their broccoli or brush their yeah. teeth or wash their hair or go to school, we're going to make them do them. Yeah, their wants and desires have to be overridden by the experience that we have. Correct. Because you can see the negative outcome that comes from it. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, and schools, how do they even know what they are interested in if they don't have exposure? And we also know as, as human beings that uh, doing something for the first time, anything, even as adults, um, change is hard and there's a lot of anxiety associated with doing something new. Um, so sometimes you need somebody who's going to say, hey, you know what? I get it. It's scary. You're going to do this for at least six months, 12 months, whatever. And then we'll reevaluate after so my question is because i've actually never asked you this what was it when you started doing judo what was it about judo that hooked you it was hard jujitsu um although there's some sorry andy i know you do jujitsu it's good <laughs> <laughs> jujitsu is is difficult too but um when i started judo <laughs> I'm just was, thinking of who I can pay to make <laughs> stuff from Matt because it's not going to be me. It was like, a new challenge, and it was really difficult, like much harder. And then especially when I tried. Physically harder? Yeah, was, what about it was harder? You have to stand up almost the whole time. Yeah. So I would compare judo to like sprinting for four minutes, and then if you go into overtime. 100%. Um, okay. You've seen golden score matches go for 30 minutes. There, what did you call it? A uh, golden score. That's when you go into overtime. If there's no score, then you just keep going until someone scores. The, at 30 our, yeah, it's at our last, it's like sprinting. a sudden death. Sort at our of last overtime. competition, they had a 30 minute match. No exaggeration. And there's and it could have gone for three hours if yep, it needed 100%. to. Or three yep. days. Wow. That w I would like to see that. Three days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was kind of an exaggeration. I've never heard of a match going three days. Yeah. But yeah. It somebody could, would have to theoretically. Take a, Who was that? Somebody would need a pee break. That or a was diver. shoddy and. That was Kinsella. Kinsella. Yep. Okay, so more intense. It has it's, to start yep. on the feet. You, you well, I guess jujitsu matches feet. have to start on the feet too, right? Yeah, Correct, but, but there's no guard pull option in judo. <laughs> okay. Unless you're going to tomonagi. Unless well, you but that's not a guard pull, so that's... Pretend. Like you're <laughs> yeah. gonna, you can pretend like you're going to sacrifice throw them, and then, Shh, oh my Stella, gosh, you're in the guard, and then you can... Okay. Hip bump sweep <clears> to mount. Yeah, but there's pin. also false what? attacks as well. So like if, yeah, if, if, if you pull guard per se... Um, and it doesn't look like you're actually attempting to, you know, Tomonagi or Yoko Tomonagi or some form of a Sumigayashi or sacrifice throw. I know Japanese. Mm. I know zero of the words he just said. Domo arigato. <laughs> Mr. Roboto. I mean, I can yeah. finish that one off. Okay. He cool. teaches in class. He'll be like, we're going to do something ishi. I'm just like, I look over. I'm like, does anybody know what he's talking about? <laughs> I do, I do it to look cool. Yeah. But, um, so if if you don't actually attempt to sweep them with your sacrifice throw, uh, you'll be penalized. A shido for you know false attack mm. or whatever. So there's not a guard pull option. There are strategies where you can maybe <laughs> feints, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and it's point in submission based, <clears throat> which is the same as a jujitsu tournament, correct, or a jujitsu jiu match. Yeah, well, a judo match could end if you hit like a perfect throw and they land flat on their back then that's epon okay and you would win so there's no need to try to pin them oh, shoulder blades flat on the ground right okay and that happens but if you throw them and they land like on their side then you'll get a wazari and then if you get two of those then that's also a win okay so it's a half point yeah but I, we don't need to go into like i'm just curious i'm trying to but rules, we kind of do because the listeners the, probably have no yeah. clue yeah. about judo um the other thing that Stella is forgetting to talk about is uh, Saikomi, which does not oh, exist Saikomi. in um, uh, jujitsu, which is, which is more pin. like uh, Western style wrestling, where you actually get rewarded for pinning people, which you don't get rewarded for pinning in jujitsu. So you can actually win a match by holding an opponent down for 20 seconds. Yeah, they are long pins. Though. I was going to say that seems like pin. an excessive amount of time. 10 seconds if it's off a wazari. Yeah. So if you already have a wazari, then you only have to pin, pin for 10 seconds. If you don't have any score and somehow you're on the ground, then you have to pin for 20. So you loved it right away because it, it was difficult. It but was really hard. Let me ask you this. Did you have success in it right away? <laughs> no. I was going to say don't like because I was at your first tournament. <laughs> no. Well, you never know, right? Because she did come from a background of competition at least. You know. Yeah. It, I it, mean, somewhat. Um, 
definitely not the first year. Uh, the couple after that, I started to realize this is just jujitsu. And so we kind of figure out a way to work around the rules where my judo was a little bit behind still. Mm. But if I could get them to the ground, then I could pin them and use my jujitsu. And really, it wasn't until this last like year and a half, maybe two years that my judo has actually really grown. And now I'm able to beat people with judo and jujitsu in these judo matches. I think it's an important point that she says she's not successful like immediately because I think or I have seen at least you're good. Don't worry about your microphone. He touched it. It's fine. <laughs> I see it all the time where people see somebody who is on a trajectory that you're on. They're like, oh, they're just a natural. Like it must have just come easy to them because they see how they're performing in that moment and they don't see the how many years of jujitsu was it before you found judo? Twelve? Thirteen. Yeah. She's doing math. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's got her doing math in her head. She's we not need, good at the we math. We need Ricky for the math. <laughs> she's good at math. I had been doing jujitsu for about eight years before I started judo. Yeah, it is. Five plus eight is 13. <laughs> I started judo right before my 13th birthday. Okay. All right. Pat on the back. Nice work, still. <laughs> That's still a robust amount of experience to bring into a new competitive sport. And I think, like I said, I see people all the time equating success with either either a natural or, oh, it was the jujitsu. That's what made you so good at it. And you still, though, had to struggle your ass off. The first year of losing or struggling, for people who haven't experienced that, not awesome. Nobody signs up for that, I yeah. think, up front. They probably will feel the value in it later. But nobody comes in and says, hey, I'd like to suck for the next year. You know what else I like about judo? I, this goes back to your initial question, mom, where you were like, why did you like judo? Why did you stick with it? I like it when you call me mom. <laughs> she usually calls me Kisa. Well, that's your name. <laughs> um, it was something for me. Having three brothers, we all did jujitsu, but I found judo and I was doing it and they weren't. Who's better at jujitsu between you and your three brothers? Are they going to listen to this podcast? I have no idea, <laughs> but they're not here. Um, it's not really fair to compare me to all of them because let's just start with Joe. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Joe doesn't do jujitsu anymore. So Okay. You win <laughs> next. Ricky, yeah. Ricky and I have really competitive matches. I can see that. Um, if we both start on our feet, then I'm going to get the takedown before he pulls guard. And then from there it's, it's a fight because he's going to try to attack my ankles because he likes to ankle lock, lock, foot lock me. But <clears throat> if I can get on top and stay on top, then I can probably win. Okay. So say call it 50-50 then. Yeah. Ted. But I'm not going to fight Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to fight Ted either. He's a madman. Sometimes I like to really like push his buttons and try to get him to, and then mom usually steps in. I All can't right. wait till he listens to this podcast. He'll be like, oh my God, Stella. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and he'll listen to it for sure. <laughs> yeah. I like to. <sighs> so you can hold your own against all three at least. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Fair Especially enough. Especially if there's food involved. So you found it for you, and you made it yours. Yeah. This is, yeah. That's a good point. Perfect world. We are, it's January 2020 right now. What's what's the target that you have on the wall that you're aiming for? This year? Um, well, let's go farther than this year. What's your, what would you, I mean, what's the pie in the sky goal that you have? I've never heard of that saying, but I like it. Because <laughs> now I'm thinking of pie. i think of pie. another metaphor. Um. Like kids today <laughs> behind the sky. I, I thought that was relatively uh, okay. known. Um, what's the long term goal that you have set for yourself? <laughs> yeah. My long term goal would definitely be the Olympics. Um, 20, 24 is kind of close, believe it or not. Four years that means I would need to be like this year making um, those international tournaments and starting to win and improve my international ranking. Mm -hmm but it's just not realistic for me to qualify. I mean, maybe in four years, who knows? Um, I've only done one international tournament so far. So maybe 2028 for the Olympics? 2028 is definitely realistic. 2024, I think I would be on the international circuit, like competing hopefully throughout the year at a variety of different Grand Prix and Grand Slams. I would really prefer to go to Paris, France for the Olympics, and that's 2024. But no pressure. I'm just saying, like, if I'm going to go to Paris with you, your mom. 
Have they declared 28 yet? I don't yet? like France. We went to Paris. I've never been. How can I know if I like it or not? We went to Paris without you. I know. <laughs> Just for the love of God, do not go through the Charles de Gaulle airport. They will lose your bags. They didn't lose our bags. Did you land in Paris and stay there for a while? For 23 hours. Three times I've been through Charles de Gaulle where I got to where I was going, and then the conveyor belt just goes around and around it's and actually around. actually never happened to me at CDG. CDG. Well, I hope that it does, and I hope that you never you find your luggage. And I hope like that, that you need something in that luggage really badly and that it ruins your trip. Well, I also know. Well, like that. I keep my chocolate <laughs> with me when I travel so that that doesn't happen. The good news is that mm. Stella will be 22 years old in 2020. And the, well, I was going to ask about that through the age too. I mean, what is peak competitive age for a female judo athlete, Olympic hopeful? The term is judoka. Judoka, okay. Yeah, I don't say that too often. Kind of sounds weird when I say it. So, <laughs> judoka, I like it. Judoka. What's the term for jujitsu? Jujitsu. Jujitsu era. Jujitsu era. A dude. <laughs> yeah. Basically. So 26, is that early on in your competitive career or would that be tail end? 20, it's 22. She'd no, be 22. No, like say she were talking about the four years after Honestly, that, 2028. 20, it really depends. Like, because Ronda some... Rousey was in the Olympics when she was like 16. But also, Ronda Rousey's mother was a substantial yeah. judo influence. Probably, I'm assuming she was probably doing judo as you were at the same age you were doing jujitsu. But there's also women who there's, are in their 30s. Yep, there's some women in their 30s who are still kicking it. Like, but ass? Yeah, we say bottom. <laughs> <laughs> These are hilarious. We say <laughs> buns. We say buns. Bum. Yeah. Kicking bum. Kicking bum. Yeah, yeah. Just, just very aggressive. So, I wonder if it's, it's really across up. the board. Like, there's also a player from uh, Ukraine, and she just turned 19. She has been beat everyone like at every single is that that tall daria billeted yep good old daria she's like five seven and is two weight classes below me i don't know how that's 48 kilos Stella fights at 57 yeah so you have a strategy though at least a road print for yourself going forward yeah a blueprint i should say i want to spend some time talking about what you had to do to get to where you are now because you are a senior in high school, correct? Yep. But you're graduating early. I'm graduating weeks. in ooh, ooh, 19 days. <laughs> Which is no small feat. Um, that's She's not, also it's not where I was when I was are 18. You did you get a B last semester? No. We, She's, mom, are you still 4.0? I'm a 3.8 right now. <sighs> that sucks. Kicked out. Okay. Kicked out. No, it's fine. I'll go Which back is to also something we've never pushed her on at all. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think it is. That's why I'm not concerned. Like 3.8 is still good, and I'm yeah. sleeping and training and happy. So, but you're also doing a lot of things differently than I think young women are at your age, the vast majority. And I think it's important to talk about how you got to where you are and the things that you're going to be able to do. People oftentimes overlook the hard work and the grind and the things you have to do on a day to day level. And I think what Travis said is in the beginning is correct. Sometimes, especially recently, I wonder how much influence parents have on kids. How much is out-of-the-box programming and how much you're able to mold? I think it's a combination of both. You need something to write with? Yeah. Are you going to draw me a picture? No, I want to let her talk, but I need to remember my thoughts. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll fill the gap since you're looking for paper and a pen. and um, <laughs> He just wants to talk again. I like to hear myself talk sometimes. <laughs> but, it's actually uh, true. <laughs> um. No, what I was going to, I was just going to say what, uh, kind of dovetail off of what Andy was saying, uh, about parents and influence and so on and so forth. But I think, you know, the hard reality is that m most parents don't want to accept the fact that <clears throat> their children are influenced far more by their circle of friends than they are by their parents. And, um, we all know this is true if we go back and, and we look at our own childhood and we think about like the, the impact that our parents had on us in, in terms of influence versus our friends and, and the people that we were trying to impress and please. And um, the reality is, as parents, the best thing we could do is try to control our children's environment because we as parents are going to have very little influence on our children. 
Well, the older but, they get, the less time we have with them. Correct. No, the most time we're going to spend with our kids is when they're babies. Um, and the older they get, the less time we get to spend with them. And um, Except if that we, we're lifting buddies. Well, yeah. That's, are we going to bump to that? Yeah. yeah. We but <laughs> we you want to talk, but that's incredibly mm-hmm. atypical in and of itself, I think. Yeah, for sure. It is 100%. Like, I mean, uh, uh, this is about Stella, so she should talk about it. But the reality is, is you asked me, like, what do I think when I see Stella? And I'm like, I think, man, it's pretty awesome. Um, there's a lot of mornings because, you know, we have a personal trainer and, and uh, we work out as a family and as a team Monday, Tuesday, Thursday mornings and we power lift. And um, I can pretty much always count on at least <laughs> one person being there. And that'll be Stella. Yeah, because Hank's a dog. Well, <laughs> I can always count on Hank because he has to do what I tell him. But um, so Hank's always I there. Travis does what Hank. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I think it was a, a couple weeks ago. It was basically just me and Stella. Like the whole week we'd show up and I'd be like, where is everybody? And it was funny because it was like my 18 year old daughter is the one person who doesn't miss lifting. Is he telling you to come to lifting or are you making that no. call? <laughs> well, most mornings I'm already at the gym because like tomorrow morning, for example, I have uh, an hour of cardio before we lift. So so what time does your cardio start? Walk me through an average day, like a, an, a, a training day in your life. I was just telling mom how excited I am for tomorrow. Um, I don't have judo tomorrow, so that's unfortunate. That's like one of the only days of the week that I don't get to train judo and the gi. But tomorrow morning, I'll wake up at 5. Do you want my whole routine, Andy? Yeah, Okay, so I I'll do. wake up at 5, and I'll meditate. And I listen to those headspaces. Those, so your guided meditation? Yeah, I okay. love those. Is um, headspace an app or? Yep, Okay. it's an app that I like to use because then I can pick certain, um, like, I don't remember what they're called, but different, like, units. Mm-hmm. Like, some are managing with, some are managing change or like if you're feeling really anxious, if you have a competition coming up, I've listened to all of the competition. So you can ones. tailor it towards yeah, it's awesome. your headspace or what you're trying to shoot yeah. for. Okay. So I like to start every morning with that while my espresso is brewing. Thank you, Mima. Shout out to Mima. Yeah, Mima gave me her espresso maker and I use it every morning. Anyways, so then I'll have my protein and espresso. Then I go to cardio from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m which goes right into lifting. Like I'll go and grab a... When you say cardio, are you doing that by yourself or do you have a coach? No. My judo coach is... Shout out to Coach Sean. Yeah. He is very committed to me. And Mm -hmm. if I tell him that I want to do cardio in the morning, I want to win, I want to go to these competitions, he'll be there. That's the rule that we have with each other. We should apologize to Sean real quick before you go on. Why? For killing his general. Killing his general. Why you got to bring up? politics because he's iranian we should say sorry okay but he's oh, american stop. damn you're, you're historical okay. anyways go ahead keep he's, going sean, he's sean, not even getting it right sean we're sorry oh he's, not even, right. he's not even getting it right so you're at cardio at six yep and, and he's he's there with me he, and he also he runs the circuits gnarly playlists yeah Very he good. knows exactly playlist. he knows exactly what music to play to make me run through the ladders really fast <laughs> or if it's like a more calm part then he'll put on Walking on Sunshine because that's my favorite playlist. Um, after cardio, we'll lift. And then tomorrow, right after lifting, I have to run home. Not actually run. This is where hustle. I cool down a little bit. Hustle to get all my stuff together and go to school. Um, this year, I have a gym class. I know it's kind of funny, but I need the credit. But I'll just run during my gym class while they do their guided workout or sometimes Activity. it's just a game day but I've talked to all my teachers they know what I'm doing with my life and so I'll just go run um after school I'll go teach jujitsu to the cutest human beings who exist the four-year-olds and then the teenagers a little bit more difficult the worst <laughs> maybe not the, the worst. cutest human beings. when you yes. say worst Travis are you referring to the four-year-olds or the teenagers the teenagers Concur. I will take three and four-year-olds <laughs> all day <laughs> All day. I was going to say I concur with that. <laughs> I don't even teach them, but I <laughs> concur with them. I disagree. I like all the age groups. You're sweet. Yeah, you're, and you lie very well. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate the teenagers. I like the teenagers. So you're, yeah. at, you're teaching like the teenagers. Yeah. So tomorrow I teach for just two hours. Um, 
and then I'll go home and get some food before I go up to Whitefish to do jujitsu from seven to eight. To teach or to participate? Participate. Okay. And then I get to go home. Does that mean participate? Is that is that a euphemism for beat up Michael? That's Mike? not Michael. That's Daniel's yeah, class. That's, Michael's that's, that's Daniel's class. class. Okay, euphemism for beating up Daniel. Daniel's the coach. No, he's the coach. Mm. But we, we roll afterwards. So I guess it, it's more like I go home at like 8.30. I was going to say, you know there's open mat right after that class. Yeah. So you probably participate in that. So yeah. you're five to probably home if you're leaving Whitefish in the door at nine. Your day is not over. You got homework, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll meal prep all my stuff for the next day and then. That's fun. Oh, we're going to talk about that too. It is really fun. Oh, what time does your normal day end? Hold on. We got to get her through her day. Uh, do you mean like what time do I go to sleep? Yeah. It depends on what time I want to wake up because I've been really, really adamant about getting sleep. I, I think sophomore and junior year, I would just sacrifice my sleep. I was trying to be a 4.0 student, a good coach, um, and try to be an athlete. And I was just like, okay, I just need to not sleep. Like, that's fine. And I would get like four hours of sleep or five and just keep going. But I realized that I was... Then you got pneumonia. Yeah. Okay. So then I got pneumonia (laughs) (laughs) and missed a bunch of competitions. A month. She was out for a month. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt it. No, it was really bad. Yeah. Four or five hours is not enough. Well, with a workload like that, what you're describing, you're opening with physical activity. And then the middle of the day is physical activity. And And later in the day is physical activity. Yeah. And I thought it was fine because I was like, cool. Now I just have more time to do all of the things that I want to do. But then I was like, I'm actually doing myself a disservice because now I'm not performing as well as I could had I been getting like all the sleep that I needed. My body's clearly not going to recover in four or five hours. What do you shoot for now? Seven. Seven minimum. Okay. So And on weekends, is you do a lot of catch-up sleep on weekends. Yeah. So I'll get, usually during the week, it's so like So what time do you get to, to bed, I guess? 10. 10. Tonight will be 10? Yeah. Okay, cool. Might have to sleep in the car. No, we're good. <laughs> I'm like, we can get you guys out of here before then to no, make it. We'll be good. The decision to pursue graduating high school early, where did that come from? Um. Because you're going to graduate a uh, semester early? Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, your mother. Your mom. Hold on, I'll push this button. What was it you said? Go ahead. Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your mom's mom. Wait, it's wait, it's my mom. My bad. My bad. Yeah. I can't respond. No, your mom. I don't. I was really passionate about school for a while because I was excelling and I was a good student. And I don't know when you're doing when you're doing well at something, you want to keep doing well. It's basically like you're just getting high fives and pats on the back all the time because you're doing a good job at school. But I became really uh, demotivated, I guess, by the school last year when they started an attendance policy. And that's when I realized that they were grading us on being at school versus the work we were actually doing. I was like, okay, so I'm gone because I'm doing these judo competitions or because I'm traveling for them. And then things just weren't balancing out. I felt like the school wasn't supporting me and what I wanted to do. And so I'm like, okay, I just need to finish school and go do what I need to do, what I want to do. Do they get paid by attendance? Yes. It's a complicated equation, but there's somehow there's connected. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. For me, it just felt unfair because I wasn't being valued as a student. While there are other kids who are missing just as much school as me for school sponsored activities, such as football, traveling, soccer, right. And they get school sponsored, for doing physical activities. I'm doing physical activities too, but it's just not school sh- sanctioned. I thought you were going to say school shit. She doesn't use uh, those words we discussed. She doesn't this. cuss. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> the meal prepping. I love meal prepping. So do we. We <laughs> love it when you meal prep because you're <laughs> so quiet about it. And Maybe at this point your parents can talk a little bit about you and what it takes for you to be able to do I the things that you do. I already know they're going to be mean to me about it. I don't think they're going Stella. to be. Can I tell you why I meal prep and why I like follow the plans that I'm given from uh, Lockhart and Leith Nutrition? Yes. Oh, shout out to Lockhart and Leith. Yeah. yeah. Good, because Headspace doesn't pay you. Well, They got a shout yet. out for mm. free. <laughs> Headspace. Headspace, look us up. <laughs> no, no, no. Anyways, um, 
I figure do everything in my power to be the best athlete I can. So if that means dialing in my nutrition and making weight precisely or even just slightly under, why wouldn't I do that? It's not just When nutrition. did that start for you? Um, well, I had a really bad weight cut when I was still at 52 kilos. For judo or jujitsu? For judo. Okay. So this was, was the one that I was with you? No, this was in Fort Lauderdale. That was when you... This was at the U.S. Open. And that was is, your previous nutritionist, who we won't mention by name. What do you yeah. mean by a bad weight cut? What well, does that mean? first of all, I didn't make weight. I missed by 0. 0.2. Can we say Pounds or kilos? It, uh, kilos. 0. 0.2 okay. kilos. 0. 0.2 kilos, which is... Still 0. 0.2 kilos. 0. 0.8. What is that? 0. 0.8 pounds? 2.2 times? What it's it's a pound. It's basically. really close. It sounds like 17 pounds. I'm not sure on the math on that, but... No, it's like half a pound. No, no, no. It was, you was missed by 0. 0.5 kilos. No, I didn't. You missed by one pound. No. I missed by half a pound. Because I remember looking at the scale and it said 52.2. And then that was the worst feeling I've ever felt. It was awful. And I was, was in Washington with you and you missed weight too after we were, we did like three or four baths. What? No, That's I've, I've only missed weight in Fort oh, Lauderdale. You, well, off the record, she may have about? missed weight, but they counted it. No, we still competed, but I'm just saying it was a hard weight cut. By hard, do you anyway. mean it was the volume of weight that you have to lose prior to the weigh-in? Um, or the difficulty of just getting it off? Or the combination of the two, I guess. Yeah. It was a combination, and then... What? It wasn't a whole lot of weight um, had I started earlier. Or um, done the uh, water loading process a little bit better because I don't know. Have you done a weight cut before? I, have, I actually know almost nothing about weight cutting. To me, it seems like from the outside, one of the most horrendous things that you could try to do. It depends. It depends on yeah, how it depends you prepare on for it. Who you who you have telling you what to do. I just no, think in it's science, general, it can't really. be good for your body. You look at the people. Actually, there's a lot of, I read this uh, article from George Lockhart. Again, he is a genius. He, yeah. No, he is. I know. And the article and was, adorable. was all about how um, not only do you cut weight to be like competitive and like if you're the only one not cutting weight, but everyone else is, then you're at a disadvantage. So he talked a little bit about that, but it was also about what happens within your body when like you do a sauna, for example, and you'll get certain... Um, the heat shock proteins? Yeah. And that your body will just be at its peak performance. I mean, it might not feel like it when you're in that hot bath. <laughs> I just see people at like the UFC weigh-in, and it looks like they're one foot inside of a coffin. So let's be clear about this. That That's probably much more extreme. And this is where I feel like I need to say something as Stella's mother, because I struggled with eating disorders all my teenage years and into my college years. And so then to have my one and only daughter be in a sport that was very weight based, mm -hmm. there are weight classes, you have to make these weight classes and your value as a human being has a lot to do with how you perform. And if you can't even get off the scale and step into the ring, so to speak, then where is that for you? Yep. So bringing my own kind of baggage into this, it was really important to me that Stella had a overall healthy weight to begin with, mm -hmm. which m had very little to do with her weight. It had more to do with just who she is. And her body type has definitely changed as she's matured and gone through puberty. Yeah, and now thick. she's 18. Mm -hmm. But now she's thick with two Cs. <laughs> we're monomorphs. Yeah, bro. these two. They that's got, why we squat a lot of weight, though. Yeah, that's they got squat ass out. for days. And they do. They squat a lot of weight, but that's we their call body it get, type. Ghetto booty is the politically that's true. correct term. I can rest for that. my beer can on both of their butts. Damn right. I actually anyway. don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> Just say yes. Okay. <laughs> Back up. So it was important for me that there was never an issue, particularly when she's going through puberty, about weight. Like, just be healthy, sleep, eat well. I feel like those competitive it is, sports it is. that are tied to the scale could hide. Um, eating disorders really, 100%. really efficiently because it would give you an opportunity mm -hmm. to actually be rewarded for that behavior. Or have you read Ronda Rousey's book? I have not. My fight, your fight. I have not. Shout out to Ronda. Yeah. Well, that's how I. Yeah, I read it. Um, she struggled with bulimia when she was doing judo. Hmm. Was she 
Because of the weight cut? Yep. When she was about 16, I think she was trying to make my weight. Or maybe it was... Yeah, she was trying to make 57. That's ridiculous. Something like that. And She's definitely not 57. And then she... Well, Stella used to compete lighter, too. We moved her up. Mm -hmm. Because we were told... Why do you say we? We moved her up. It's cute when he does that, though. I hate you guys. (laughs) What year was it that they moved up your weight class? They. Um, It was after I missed weight at the U.S. Open. What year was it, though? Last year. It was a year and a half ago. Were you 17 or 18? 17. 16, almost 17. Then I'm going to have to say it was they and we combined. I'm confused. <laughs> you said a lot. You said a lot of numbers in there. Maybe I shouldn't graduate in 19 <laughs> if, if you were under 18, you were a minor. So they were assisting you in making the decision. Yeah, well, but if they were like, you're moving up a weight class, and I was like, no, I'm not, then I would just. They would just hold you down and feed you mm-hmm. ice cream. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I think I could have like just so said, no, I'm not here, moving up. Then I'm like, no. I think okay. I feel like this is actually, I don't know. Maybe I'm only interested in this. We haven't really talked about this at length, but going into us open, right. It was us open in Fort Lauderdale. Stella. Yeah. It, so it came off of her having pneumonia. Mm-hmm. So she's already stressed. Yeah. She's, that was my first, was it my first tournament back? I really don't know. Cause I had pneumonia in May. Did we go to June? No, Olympics? I think you went to JO's. Yeah. Because I oh, think JO's yeah. were in Spokane. Is that Junior Olympics? I had yeah. it two inhalers. <laughs> yeah. At Junior Olympics, that was tough. And then she went to US Open. And after JO's, she was clearly stressed. She wasn't happy with her performance. She also was out of school, so she didn't have all those high fives and pats on the back that she was getting before. And what I'm watching is her trying to figure out how to control what feels out of control. And so she was not following any food plan whatsoever. She wasn't trusting what her current nutritionist at the time was giving her. And well, I was I was doing it, but not, like she basically had six weeks of an eating disorder. All of six weeks. I just okay. You're giving me flashbacks now. Actually, I remember coming home and sitting on that chair and then falling asleep because I was. I couldn't stay awake. Yeah, because she didn't. Actually, it was during the summer. Eating. Yeah, and it was light outside, and I would fall asleep. And she wasn't eating. And enough then I would wake up and be and super grumpy, like I could have killed someone that summer, probably. Yeah. And then she would melt down in the bathroom in a pile of tears. Like I'm watching all this, mm-hmm. and it feels very familiar, because you I mean, experienced it yourself. Probably, well, I, I was never a high level athlete like she was, but I experienced that level of emotion and looking for value in something and. You know, where are my high fives and pats on the back? And how am I going to get accolades from people if I'm not A, performing, or B, at least looking like I'm performing? So it was it was all very familiar. And so I'm watching it, but I know I can't intervene or interfere because I also know this is something that she needs to kind of sort out herself. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of like herding kittens, right? You don't want anybody, and this is actually my... You use analogy. That analogy a lot. Well, it's my analogy for parenthood in general. Like that's, that's what I was thinking. When you, you can't said put that. a cat on a leash. I mean, you can, but it's uh, weird. You hundred percent can. I've seen it. It's. So I've weird. definitely seen so my weird. nephew, who's a cat, by the way. No, I mean, I think that's. Pretty He's been on a leash. Basil Pintos has been on an, a leash. Oh, you can okay, put a cat weird. on a leash. Yeah. But it's weird, and people who put cats on leashes are you weird. Put, you can put a kid on a leash, but it's not effective. Yeah, but uh, so you kind of just do this, like, okay, don't fall off the cliff. I'm going to be there to snatch your fat little wrist before you actually tumble to your death. Ouch. But, but you have to, as a parent, though, also yeah. let them get dinged up along the way because they have to respect the cliff yeah. if you're not there. So I knew... Burnt baby avoids fire. Shout out to Salome. But no, you just have to keep them in the lines, right? Like, I mean, you have to keep them in the lines, but... I knew going to Florida that she was going to miss weight. Dude. That's messed up. <laughs> you, you were trying to cut eight pounds. So I was 122 when we left? No. Trying to make 114. I can't do the math. Yeah. That would be correct if she was trying to make 114. She's pretty good yeah, at 52. the math. Yeah, 52. Okay. That was good, huh? No, I All think right. that's yeah. another fist bump. <clears throat> Boom. And I, I just, I, not only did I not think it was physically possible for her to do that, but I also didn't want to see her do that because, I mean, that's suicide. But we, we cut seven and a half. Yeah, and I was there every step of the way. And it was painful. And then when she missed, it was even more painful because no one likes to see their kid disappointed. Yeah. 
and that heart wrenching. But I thought, all right. And then thank God. It's more they than were, disappointed, actually. They were. They said, okay, well, you can fight up a weight class, which they don't do, by the way. They never do that. World tournaments. Tournaments, absolutely. It'd be not. just a hard pass. You were yeah. done right there at the You're scale. Like, oh, you and flew to Morocco and you miss weight. Sucks to suck. Enjoy the espresso out in the market. Yeah. National yeah. tournaments. And the cobras. Also, it's normally not allowed. I'm not really sure why did they did that at this one. I don't know. But they let her move up to 57. Mm. And then she kicked ass and then I got at 57. Silver at the U.S. Open. I was way smaller than them can because say, I had cut can that. Can we say out loud who you beat? Why? Okay, never mind. Can you look <laughs> it up on the internet? Yeah. You might as well say it then. Yeah. Well, it was just a big deal because the U.S. Open is such a high-level so U.S. Say, tournament. Say her name. <laughs> or don't. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, you, people can look it up on the internet. If yeah, they curious. can look. So big sissies, I would say it. I don't know it. Or I would that say was it. that's when we decided to move up, though, because I realized. Well, for me, I was like, okay, I'm smaller than them, and I still beat them. Why am I not in this weight class? Right. And you can be stronger. And this is where this is what I weigh, anyways. So whatever, enjoy your big butt and your boobs and it's be at 57. Have, Have you always been this driven? Mm, yeah, I think so. What advice I, would you give to young women your age? Like I said, when we started, my daughter's 11. And I think um, I just spent the holidays with her and she's got all the same social stuff that every other young woman has. She's got, or I don't know every other, that's a broad term. She's You know on, what it's like to be an 11 year old. <laughs> well, she's on TikTok and she's on Instagram oh, and cool. she's on Snapchat. TikTok's and I will, funny. and I will say that, yes, it probably is funny, but I am terrified more often than not of the example that I see set for people on any of those social media platforms. Uh, I don't know the generous way to say it, but I mean, maybe let's just say sometimes the world that those people are portraying is artificial as opposed to real life. Yeah. And you are in the middle of a journey that you're looking out potentially eight years from now. Yep. What advice would you give to an 11 year old little girl who wants to put a target eight years down the road on their life to get to the place where you are, where it's at least achievable? Because you still, obviously, you got a lot left you got to do, right? There's a lot yeah. of road in front of you, but you also put a lot of mileage on the road behind you as well. And to do that, you did some things that I don't see a lot of young people and, quite frankly, a lot of adults willing to do. To meal prep, I'm going to guess that you probably sacrificed um, some experiential things as a young woman in high school because in pursuit of your goals. Yeah, but they don't seem like a big deal when you have something that you love and something you're working towards. Like, I missed... Like homecoming that. freshman year to do a super fight in Portland. My friends were a little bit upset with me for that, but I went to prom junior year. Like I'm getting the experiences just. You missed that party last night where all those kids got a minor in possession. I'm not upset about it. <laughs> so think instead of thinking, uh, referencing this to my 11 year old daughter, what would you say to your 11 year old self? I think, I think 11 year old Stella definitely didn't know um i didn't know that i wanted to be in the olympics i don't think i had eight year goals i think you were driven at that point though i was driven for sure to find something that i was good at and something that i loved be i think a lot of people say like oh find something you love but i think what a lot of people don't realize is that usually the things you're drawn towards are the things you're good at yeah i loved video games when i was 11 it's dangerous advice yeah i think to just oh just go do something you love well I love doing heroin, so something maybe you love. <laughs> not, that was yeah. not actually a statement of what <laughs> I love. I'm just saying some people could say, I love sitting on my ass and shooting heroin, so that's probably but, not the best broad advice. But does that make you feel like the best version of yourself? I Well, having never done heroin, <laughs> for clarity, I was not actually talking about myself. I can't imagine that that would. I would have yeah. to suspect that those people are just in a living hell physically and mentally. Probably, <laughs> I also would not know from experience, but good. I hope you never do. Eleven is a is a tough age because that's middle school, fifth right? grade, right before middle school. Sixth grade, fifth sixth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might have still been playing soccer at that point. You actually, were, in fact, that so, was the year. Oh that yeah. You so I actually started soccer before I started jujitsu. 
That's no. not true. You started yeah. soccer before judo. You started. I started soccer when I was four. We did indoor soccer. Oh, that's right. You guys were so cute. And then I started jujitsu when I was five. So sorry, this is going backwards a little bit. It's fine. Um, but I was doing both of those, and that wasn't an issue. Like the schedules never really conflicted. We moved to Montana. I s- continued doing soccer and jujitsu. Um, oh, I was also doing Girl Scouts. I was in a lot of activities at one point. You're welcome. Um, well, that's also the way that parents can help kids find what they love, a diversity yeah. of experiences. And then when I was 11, um, that's when soccer starts getting more competitive. And it started to conflict with my jujitsu schedule. And you and I sat down, Mom, and you said, okay, you can continue doing soccer and jujitsu, but you can only go to one jujitsu class a week. And I was like, okay, I'm quitting. Everyone is starting to be uh, kind of babies anyways and flop on the ground. So why don't I like take people down onto the ground instead full time? That was the tough, that. the really difficult part of that for you. I, I mean, it was I'm hard guessing. for me because I'm a big soccer fan. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that you are. You have that Manchester United jersey. It's really fun, actually. I'm a huge fan. Of Your the favorite rash guard is that Manchester United under the gi <laughs> on Fridays. He, Call me ball was my first love before <laughs> jujitsu. Oh my God. <laughs> the tough part for her was that she was invited a year early to be part of the traveling team. The yeah. soccer traveling team? The yeah. soccer traveling team. I'm familiar team. with it. Yep. So yeah. back to pats on the back and high fives. You know, here's something that she's not only good at, but people are acknowledging how good she is and no one other than our family was really acknowledging her greatness in jujitsu. And so I, I remember having that conversation with you in the office and that was really tough because I knew you didn't love jujitsu. I mean, sorry, I knew you didn't love soccer. I knew you loved the accolades you got from soccer Um. and I don't know about that. I love soccer. It It's a lot of fun. Like, I would still go play it right now, honestly. Shut your mouth. I didn't say competitively and or, like, join a soccer ground. team. It's not even, you couldn't even do and it right Oh, my, hillside. that would be even more fun. It's a mountain. <laughs> Anyways. I there's know. no money in soccer. All the money is in jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's money in soccer for, like, 100 people. Do you think he's going to say anything, like, sincere? <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah. It's a lot of sarcasm. It's okay. Um, yeah, I guess 11 was the age that I decided um, jujitsu over soccer. How about freshman year in high school? What would you tell your freshman self? Ooh, freshman year? I had still been pretty new at judo, but I was invited to go train in Boston. And we never took them up on that opportunity. Who invited you to train? Jimmy Pedro. Oh. Do you remember that? I think they were just trying to get in your dad's pants. That's really weird to say. I mean, from a business standpoint, not from oh, an actual. Maybe because you had like done the partnership with Fuji, right? Maybe. I don't know. Let's not give shout outs to people for <laughs> Please stop with that. I'm not trying She's just to. Talking. We're good. They're just, uh, you told me to be myself. Be yourself <laughs> and whatever comes out of your mouth is fine. Don't worry about it. What do I tell my freshman self? I don't know. I so don't anyways, know. you were going to. Instead of your freshman, what would you tell a freshman young woman who has a fill in the blank goal it doesn't have to be judo or jujitsu or somebody that you see who has a goal but they don't know how to get there okay they have a goal they have a goal they have a long-term goal that's awesome first of all then you'd need to break it down so we talked my goal is the olympics one day obviously i'm not just gonna have that goal and let it sit there there's a plan that needs to be in place and so like you have to break it down further to your uh, not long term but like midterm goals you can call it that and then short term stages yeah and then how to get there what things you need to improve and look at it not just in that one area of life because this okay this is something you actually taught me um you need to work on make sure that all of these are balanced while you're working towards that goal i'm kind of all over the place but to be clear while I'm striving for the Olympics. I need to make sure that I check up on my mental health, emotional health, and physical. So if I'm trying to cut weight and it's not working and I'm starting to hate myself, then this goal isn't working. It needs to be adjusted. If I'm working towards the Olympics and I'm not sleeping, 
and I get pneumonia, then my physical health is also poor. So my goal needs to be revised. And for me, I'm very goal oriented person. So I have daily things and weekly things. I have this big board that I just painted because it didn't match my room. <laughs> I redecorated my room this summer and, um, Oh, I needed my I needed my goal board to match, but it has weekly. I appreciate that. And then daily, and usually I try to have a variety. So maybe I know that my weekly goal is going to be to, I don't know, make sure all my assignments are turned in. I would say that that's obviously not a physical goal. It's not really emotional. Maybe it's just mental, so I can make sure that mm, still getting good grades, still uh, learning new skills. So... I would try to have a variety of goals. Even if I know that I want that to be my main one, I need to throw one in there as well as like stay hydrated. Just little things to make sure that I'm balanced. The important part about that too that I've seen in you is that then when you start to, when you feel like you start to fall behind in one area, you're usually pointing to the other areas like, well, at least I'm doing this or at least I'm doing that. So, okay, I'll continue working on this. Rather than if you only have one singular focus and you start to falter, then gets overwhelming. All, yeah, all hell breaks loose, and yep. your pile of tears in the bathroom. I hate it when that happens to me. I always remember to hydrate because I see the post-it note that says, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, here you have some interesting <laughs> notes for yourself." That was on my whiteboard because I have a whiteboard too. My whiteboard oh. is where I like to do my like to-do lists. So, like, if I get home, I know I need to do laundry, meal prep, shower, lay out my clothes. I like. You have that stuff written out? Well, I like to check them off Shut on up, my Andy. whiteboard. Fair. No, I'm asking. I'm not... Jesus. What's wrong with that? I, there's when no you, judgment. I'm curious of how far out she actually structures it. We, we well, like, check, you, we, we like, we like to check checklist. our boxes I love off. checklists. And on the whiteboard... It actually does feel good off. to just check 100%. stuff off. It's Sometimes so nice. I'll write a checklist with things I've already done, and then I'm just like... Go back. Ch ch That's cheating. <laughs> Andy, I do that sometimes too. It feels good. What do I need to do today? I'm like, wait a minute. What have I already done? Indeed. Always put at the top <laughs> of it's your valid. at the top of your list. Put oh. wake up. <laughs> That's yeah. what or, I do. Or, I or do put that. Make <laughs> a <laughs> list. <laughs> okay, I actually do it. Too. Yeah, I do it too. I but do. The, I even check off shower. The important part Me of too. that. <laughs> the important part of that though is that you should celebrate the little victories. Yeah. Make your bed. Brush your teeth. Wake up. Oh, that's part of my routine Sauna. too, Andy. Lift. Make your bed I don't doubt morning. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just, mm -hmm, at the same time, I that's know, awkward. Kind of weird. So, as her parents. Oh, wait. Okay. I feel like oh, I have to. Oh, they're going to talk about what's on my whiteboard. Oh, no, so yes, no, I need to. I feel like I have no, no, to say no. what's on your whiteboard. Wait, because wait, wait. It's, there's a cuss word in it, and you guys can't say cuss okay, words, Okay, but remember? just wait. But I can. I was, and you can. We talked about lists, because on my whiteboard, I like to do lists. But if there's something really important that I need to do or remember, then it also goes next to the list on my whiteboard in, like, some sort of cute cloud or, like, circled in a different color so that I look at that. Okay. So Hold important on. things go on that. Writing it down for me. Oh, you want me to read that? Yeah. This is one of the the labels for Stella to herself. For some reason, I was not drinking as much water as I needed to. It's not like I was like dehydrated, but I knew that I wasn't. Like I need to drink four of my thirty-two ounce water bottles. That's a day. what it looked like when I so walked in into nice the room. So this was a note to Stella. Yeah. Note to Stella from Stella: Drink water, you dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> in her own words. Yeah, <laughs> and and that did the trick. I believe there was an exclamation point as well. I think so. Or maybe something was underlined. So that. But that, the, my favorite part was that there was like a puffy cloud. Around yeah, it. <laughs> and it was like just around the edges. You yeah. know. Yeah. In and a hot pink. Marker. So then, as I'm going through my checklist, <laughs> I'll pen, take a drink from my water bottle because I'm like, okay. Stay hydrated. Weird. It's kind of like when I go to my refrigerator and there's a bunch of Tupperware in there. My Tupperware that I paid for. That's not entirely true. That's actually not true. She no. pays for a lot of that stuff. I I buy Tupperware. You wouldn't know because you don't actually. You give Hank my Tupperware all the time, and you put disgusting and you actually ground you, up organ meat. That's because Hank listens to me. And but anyway, also give that's Hank her actually yogurt. arguable at times. Well, he sometimes listens, <laughs> which is <laughs> like that time you told him to eat that baby. Wait, I told him whoa, not whoa, to. whoa, whoa, whoa. But whoa. he tried to, didn't he? He, he tries to eat. We can't talk about We'll bring Hank on for the next episode. Yeah. We'll <laughs> talk about it. Let's oh talk God. about those Tupperwares and threats of cutting people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What? You said, I will cut you. That was written on a Tupperware? <laughs> Correct. If you touch this, I will cut you. It was on a sticky. 
<laughs> what was in that actual Tupperware? I think it was probably chicken. Is that your go-to? I really like chicken, actually. Yeah. And again, I'm well, not asking for credit, judgment. To her credit, Chicken's she puts gross, time and if effort I, if into I preparing it. If I bake this chicken it, and I don't want someone to open the fridge and, and be she like, measures hmm, it out look, chicken. And seasons it. I, I but don't if want... you were to like put Stella on a Tupperware. Oh, no. Oh, that doesn't. will not be respected. Ricky in fact, would just go like in there and just like pop that sucker. Or which one of your brothers would open it? Well, none if of them. If not, potentially all three of us. Well, now it's really weird because... Living in our house right now is only me and my younger brother, Joe. Ricky's pretty close by. Yeah. But Ricky's he never in, comes Ricky's never in comes the comes apartment. To the if we, okay, so like a year ago when yeah. we were all in the house, Ted would probably eat it. Yeah, because yeah. he would see just Stella and he'd be like, oh, really, Stella? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he eat your Toblerone? He, he eats all my stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. just when does everything. He, when does he go home from college <laughs> or he go back home, to college? He went home tonight. tonight. You went back? Oh, home, he... He's not home. He's at the dorm. Yeah, it's well, when did you guys' as parents notice the drive? Well, because you have in Stella. You, well, you have four kids, and I mean, I have three. So between us, seven. Is it safe to say that there's seven wildly and completely different personalities? Some shared traits, but others ob- obviously incredibly different. You answer first. When did you notice or see? Th- so two part question: notice and see the drive, and then as a parent. What did you do to help facilitate that without becoming the helicopter parent, without, you know what I mean, empowering and enabling her as opposed to driving her as a parent? Uh, the drive uh, didn't happen right away. So in, in jujitsu, um, there was a lot of kicking and screaming and, and dragging people onto the mat. And, are you talking about me? Yeah, I had to bribe you with like iPads. And That's oh my god, no, your you understanding of history when? is so warped. Okay, fine. Remember when I you bought my own first. iPad? Remember when I <laughs> saved my own money and bought my own iPad? Is that what you're referring to? Is that it? Or no. when she bought her own AirPods that your uh, dog ate? No, I was talking about being at tournaments where it was her turn to compete. And that's she different. Was, that wasn't drive. That's different. That's anxiety. Yeah, that's completely different. That's not going to the gym, going to your class. Yet. Sorry, I didn't realize this was the Martha Stewart podcast. <laughs> Kisa, perhaps you'd like to answer. <laughs> I don't really understand what his joke was about. I don't either. But... Kisa? Uh, Stella had drive since day one. She, When she was a baby, first of all, she and her brother were born at 30 and a half weeks. So I was the alpha twin. That's true, and it's all because of her. How do you guys know that? Well, first of all, I was a. bigger. I decided that... Like this is an objective thing, or you just say that because you no, want no, to no. make... No, no, no. She was baby because bigger. she was okay. closer to the birth canal. I was the okay. alpha twin. Okay. I decided it was time to be born. 100%. She was locked and loaded and ready to go at 30 weeks. Yep. Okay. Actually, at 25 weeks, and then I was on bed rest for five weeks. And then Ricky was uh, 15 minutes later, <clears throat> so alpha twin. Mm, alpha mom, because I actually gave birth to both of you. For the love of God, whatever. get back on track. Anyway, so day one, Stella just liked things a certain way. So she, you know how you're not supposed, you're supposed to put the babies on the back with nothing around them so they don't die of mm-hmm. SIDS? Well, Stella needed to sleep on a pillow, and she couldn't be swaddled. She had to have Is her really hands. that needy? Oh, my God, yes. She had to have her hands like this, and everything had to be a certain way, mm-hmm. and she didn't want anyone except me and her grandma. Wait, why is this... Why is this my drive, though? It's, that just you, sounds like I'm really picky and that you allowed me to the be same picky. It's the way it expresses itself when, they're, when you're that yeah, young. Yeah, 100%. It's the... You knew how you wanted things, and you just made sure that they happened that way. Since mm. the day you were born. Okay, I see the She wanted to now. crawl, but I, she was my only daughter, so I put her in dresses all the time. And so she just bear crawled on her toes and hands so that she wouldn't put her knees on her dresses all the time. It was cute. It's problem solving, nonlinear problem solving. I she like it. She looked like a stink bug. She did. And she also farted. Like I was telling you guys, I, uh, okay. Too far. So Too far. It doesn't <laughs> count when you're an infant. Nobody's yeah. going to care if you're an well, infant. Well, she still farts a lot. Uh, I don't think that's I, true. <laughs> your dog farts way more. That's true. <laughs> How one do you... One more thing I'll yes. say. All four of those kids, of my kids, our kids, are driven. They're just driven in different ways. Yep. And I think the hardest part as a parent is putting ourselves aside to be able to see who they are and what it is that drives them 
and I'm not anywhere near being perfect at it, but it's something that I feel like I've committed the better part of the last 20 years to doing, trying to figure out how to do. And it was just easy with Stella because the things that drove her were very similar to what drove Travis and I. Mm -hmm. And so it was easier than it was, say, for example, for Joe. Yeah. Or Ted even, or Ricky even. So I would like to take a lot of credit for Stella, but the reality is that just luck of the draw. I think that's the case sometimes with high achievers, but I also think that there's a lot of lessons that can be learned with the way that they structure their life that enables people who maybe don't have that in their uh, software, for lack of a better term, when they start day one, there's some stuff that you can do to enhance for sure. Yeah. What would you, uh, this is a tough one, only being 18, but in the last, you know, four years in high school, is there anything that you would have changed? Do you think that you could have enhanced where you are even more by making a change looking back? I think I could have had a little bit better of a relationship with the school. Um, I think that they probably could have helped me out a little bit more with like attendance. So I'm going to go out and do these judo tournaments and then I'll come back and catch up on my work or do as much as I can beforehand. And I would communicate individually with my teachers, but I think I should have had a little bit of a better relationship with like our activities director or like the principal and maybe we would have been able to work something out. But instead what needed to happen is that I am kind of on my own yeah. and I'll do my work on my own and then I'll do my judo competitions on my own. I'll do all my training, but there's not really the support that I think um, could have been received. I mean, maybe the traditional school system, she might just might be a good, may not be a good fit for it. And there, there's a lot of competitors out there who are homeschooled or do yeah. online school, but um, I don't think we really saw that as an option because for a while I was still thinking about college or a different university. Like San Jose State was a big goal of mine for a while until we realized that um, – there's um, different training out there that yeah. I don't have to go to college and do judo. It's um, still a possibility. Yeah, but there's a lot of possibilities out there for me, and that's what this next year is really going to be about is taking in all of my opportunities, still um, growing as a competitor, but really there's a lot out there, and then eventually I'll decide where the best place for me to be is. Maybe it's still San Jose State, and I have good enough grades, um, high enough scores mm. um, that that could happen. Did you take the ACD? Yeah. I think I got 28. I don't really know what that means, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Is that a newer test? ACD? ACT. What's that? It's just, it's the equivalent it's of SAT. Like there's standardized test. You can okay. do both because some colleges. Anyways, I San Jose both. State is an option. Um, <clears throat> living in some city in the U.S. where they're really good at judo is a option as well but truthfully um i need to grow internationally and that's what my judo coach says as well that so cor yeah living and training in korea or japan yep. or france or there's a lot of other there's just a lot of opportunities and so i need to figure out which one that is and maybe i do one and realize that this isn't working maybe i lose my my balance with those three areas of my life and then we'll I'll revisit my goal revisit where my life is and maybe I move somewhere else I think a big realization I've had is that um your decisions aren't set in stone I mean to to an extent they are um I don't think I decided I was going to graduate early until the end of last year mm -hmm. and then I just went in talked to my counselor and I had already done all the hard work really I just needed to double up on an English credit and then I could be done so you can decide something, change your mind. Are you yawning? No, it's my beard keeps getting in the way. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. It's not yawning. No, I just, I, look, I pushed my beard. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's a really big lesson I've learned in this last, not even year, I would say six months. Because there was a lot of anxiety that I induced in myself, like, oh my gosh, I need to decide 
whether I'm going to San Jose State or not, whether I'm living in Boston or Florida or Korea right now. Let me let you know a secret. That's not true. I'm 42 years old, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, and it's okay. I gave up on it recently, too. It's like I'm going to do the things <laughs> that I enjoy, and I'm going to – I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. So you're, you're going to be okay. But that realization is it's like a ton of bricks falling off your shoulders. Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. When did you realize that? Recently. I, so the only you, big goal I had in my life. Though, being yeah. 18 and having that realization versus being 42. It, and all the pressure It would have been way better well. to have that realization at 18 versus no, I'm really 42. excited for her for that. I mean, yeah. a number of reasons, but also that what I see in Stella is that She's so much smarter than I ever was at that age. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Sorry, well, go about on. most. You'd be things. surprised. About I see it in my kids too. And so much more evolved and mature. And I, I mean, whether or not we actually intentionally set it up that way, I feel like our kids don't have to learn from some of the hard mistakes that we learned from. They just are already a step ahead, which is cool. Stella, where can people, because we had to get you to bed at some point, because you have to get your seven hours of sleep, so I'm going to be respectful of your time. <laughs> I think you're an awesome role model in general, but I think specifically Thank for you. young women, there, <sighs> again, I can't, I don't see everything, but a lot of the things that I do say, see, terrify me to death when it comes to the example and the things that people follow. So where can people find and follow you? Where? Mm-hmm. On social media. How could somebody, a young woman, who says, you know what, this girl has her head in the right place. She's on a path. I want to know more about that. I want to get in touch with this person. How could they get a hold of you? Honestly, if they want to... Do not give your phone number out. <laughs> no, why would I do that? I'm just... I didn't know what you were going to say next, but... <laughs> <laughs> How's this song go, by the way? What if I started singing that, do you Eight, think anyone would know? Seven, five, three, oh, oh, uh, yeah. Side note. I always hum that song to myself. Well, to myself means out loud, really, <laughs> really loud, but I do all the numbers wrong. So That's okay. <clears throat> I think it's the rhythm melody that's more important. I think if, which actually this has happened before, if a, if a girl reached out to me on social media or... Which I, platform would be the best? Instagram, for sure. What is your, inst what are they, is it a username? Handle. Han yeah. yeah. Um, I, I have two Instagrams, oh, but I'm... <sighs> Now it down them, to just one. I'm turning them into one. Okay, because we'll give that Can you one. merge two Instagram accounts? No, I'm just... You're going to have to shut one down, aren't you? Yeah. So, I had, which I had one are you keeping? <laughs> Stella dot Davison, I think. All right. Is that true? Yeah, let's look. Yep. Stella dot Davison. For a while, I would use this account, and then I had, like, an athlete page where I would only post things about jujitsu, judo, lifting that aspect of my life but this is the other thing that I realized I this year is a lot of realizations or I guess it's last year because it's 2020 but uh, <laughs> it's a new decade this last decade you had these realizations right. it they all kind of happened at once where I realized why would I have two accounts for this same person like this this Stella who does all of these amazing judo and jujitsu things is also the one who wants to post artsy pictures with her latte and you should. <laughs> so why don't I just do both? And so that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> and there's lots of pic pictures of Sabra too. There's so. a lot of pictures of, yeah, our dog Sabra what, what about and Hank? my friends. I was going to say the same thing as Hank. You know what, own? Hank, I wish I could say this to you, but it's kind of an inappropriate word and he's not here to listen anyways. Do you want to write it down and I can read it? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> While we're doing this, Dudley, uh, this is another podcast. Stella, you can't even write those words. Yeah, I can can't write that about Hank. It's true, though. Stella would like for Hank to know that basically he can go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> Damn and, it, and, Stella. And buy me some new AirPods that you ate, which were not out in the open. Just saying. It's just a chance for you to get the AirPod Pros. It's not a big deal. Hank is my rival. He peed on my ghee bag. It's on a, my bed. You're gonna have, here's the deal. You're going to have rivals for the rest of your life. You just need to play the long game. You're looking for checkmate. Yeah, but I'll I check. can't. Oh, there, I can't. You can walk on two legs, and he can't. We can discuss this later when your dad's not around, and he can't uh, punish me on the mat. See, later, I can't so. do anything to Hank though, except for withhold love, because otherwise my dad will get upset. 
but we can talk about long-term strategies okay. afterwards. Yeah, let's let's strategize. Yeah, no, but serious, in, all, in all seriousness, I think you're a phenomenal role model in the things that you have already accomplished and where you're going. I, I wish more people would structure their structure their life like that around a goal. So, and I appreciate you taking the time to, you got ink on yourself? <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to come. Yeah, thank you and for having me. Thank you too for bringing her on. I'll let you two close it out because it's your daughter. Thank you too for having me, <laughs> period. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No menstruation jokes on the on the podcast. Geez. That was not the intent. I didn't hear you use a single pun this whole podcast. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a... That's a thing that Stella does. It's either, you like she's puns? Very, she's that's very punny. That's thing about Stella. It's not just judo. It's not just jujitsu. But I also really like coffee and puns, coffee mugs. What else do I like? Vans. Oh, vans. Yes. These are all material things, so that doesn't sound good. Oh, Nespresso. that's fine. Nespresso. Yep. You two get to close it out. I have nothing to say. Travis? That, that is a sad way to close. It's not really. It just means you did an awesome job. It's sad. Um, no, I'm just uh, super proud of my daughter. Uh, I wish I could take more credit for it. But uh, I'm excited to see what the future has for. Same. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate you taking your time to listen to the podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. 2020 is going to have some, I don't, they're not changes. Maybe some updates. It'll have some updates for the podcast. First thing I'm working on right now, and as I read this, I received the email today saying that the new apparel for the podcast is likely going to be ready early next week. So by the time next week's episode launches, I should have some new offerings. And it basically was a refresh of what I had already done. Some different colorways, no different graphics yet, but I'm working on that. But definitely some different colorways that I haven't done. And for those of you who enjoy flying the flag out in town and having people ask you, hey, what's well, clear it hot? And saying, it's a podcast. It sucks. You shouldn't listen to it. That's what I would say if people ask me. There will be some new offerings for you. Uh, what else beyond that? Uh, if anybody who has not written a review for the podcast on iTunes, if you could take two minutes and do so, if you think the podcast sucks, write that down. If you think it's good, write that down or anywhere in between. If you have a suggestion on how you think I could make it better or a suggestion for a guest that you would like to hear, somebody you think is fascinating, shoot me an email. Just hit the contact button on the clearedhotpodcast.com page and I'll see what I can do. And that is all I have for this week. See you next Monday.